I want to talk about one of the, what I think is one of the most undervalued cameras that we have on the market today. So 35 millimeter SLRs, you normally think Nikon, uh, you normally think Canon, Minolta, all those more famous brands that uh, have the name recognition. But today I want to talk about a camera that I picked up really as an impulse purchase, what was it, probably three months ago, and that would be this little gem right here. This is a Konica Auto Reflex TC. I picked this up for $55 at a local camera store. Uh, shout out to Kenmore Camera. Put the link in the description. But they sold me a perfectly working, very good copy of an Auto Reflex TC. Now this one in particular came with a 40 millimeter 1.8 lens. It's a pancake, so it's pretty small. I have a hood on it now. But for size comparison, this is really how large it is. You take off the flash, then it, you have a lightweight carry-on camera. I just let this dangle from a wrist strap while I walk around, not have to deal with it swinging from my neck, and uh, it generally serves me pretty well. With the lens, it ends up having very sharp results. It's very consistent, uh, and I'm just a big fan of how it works. Now, this camera does not operate on aperture priority like a lot of film cameras do. It's shutter priority if you're running batteries, which took some getting used to, but uh, frankly, it helps me, uh, it encourages me to shoot shots with more depth of field. So uh, more sharpness, less bokeh, which is okay. Shutter, it ranges from an eighth of a second to one one thousandth of a second, again, all mechanical. Uh, there's also a bulb function, and then the ISO ranges from 25 up to 1600. The lens, the 41.8, varies from 1.8 to f22. I believe it goes up to f16 on the auto aperture setting. One thing I do really appreciate about this camera is the fact that it can run in all manual when the batteries are dead. So you take the batteries out, you have no more meter, which is kind of a bummer, but we have cell phones now. So we can use apps for that to go ahead and meter our light before taking the shot, rather than having to rely on the 40 year old in camera meter. Like I said, all mechanical. So if your battery goes out, really not a big deal. Uh, you just keep on shooting and uh, meter manually or with um, a shitty light meter like I have right here with tape on the back. For street photography, the viewfinder isn't so bright. That's one of my main complaints. So it's not a premium camera. It wasn't marketed as such. It's more of a, what I would say a beginner's SLR, but you know, it's not the camera. It's, it's what you do with it. Looking through the viewfinder, it is a bit dim. It's, I've had an X700, I've had several other Minoltas. It's not nearly as bright as the Minolta viewfinder. It's not nearly as sharp as the Minolta viewfinders, but it does have split prism focus, which is very accurate. And I, tan, I tend to land probably 95% of the shots that I take, unless they're in a rush. The viewfinder here, it's pretty dim. And as you can see on the right side of the image, right here is the aperture meter. So when you're shooting auto aperture or you're using metering, that's where it'll show you what aperture to shoot with based on the shutter speed you have selected. It's a bit dark, it's a bit hard to see. So if you're shooting at night, or a dark scene. It's not the easiest to read and it's not the easiest to tell exactly, you know, what what setting you should put your camera at. Metering in auto is pretty exceptional. You know, it averages the highlights and the shadows pretty well, I'd say. It's nothing like, you know, a Leica or a contact system, but for 50 bucks, it's probably one of the best ones that I have personally seen. Now, uh, what, what I think makes this camera is a flash. Carrying this around at night, casually bringing it to dinner, setting it on the table, having it not take up much space or be too obtrusive is fantastic. Right now I'm running the Fujifilm EF-X20 with flash sync cable to hot shoe. So it places the flash a bit higher to avoid red eye. Um, and you're able to quickly adjust and set settings with the dial here. There's another app that I use um, parallel to the light metering app that I have. I'll put the link in the description, but essentially what it does is you're able to put in the guide number and zoom of the flash and then you're able to calculate based off your ISO and your aperture what distance you should be away from your subject. After you've used that for such an amount of time, you can kind of in your head think about, okay, I am seven feet away from the subject, I'm running an 800 ISO film, I should probably shoot f4 at 
half flash power. After you know you get it down and uh, you've kind of memorized how the distances correspond based to what ISO you're running, you can really just click away and TTL is a thing of the past. The shutter is fairly quiet, it's not super loud. I did walk into the LA Art Museum yesterday and I took a couple photos. In that sort of a situation you could hear you could hear the click bouncing off the walls and echoing. Aside from that, in a normal environment, it's not a super loud shutter. It's pretty tame and it doesn't cause a whole lot of camera shake, which I like. I just gotta say that I love it. It's been super sturdy, it's been super reliable. The thing is cheap, it's cheap. I bought it for $55. It can give me good images uh, with consistency. And for whatever reason, I just love 40 millimeters. I don't know what it is about 40 millimeters. I had a Canonet QL17 back in the day. That was the 40mm 1.7 lens, and I adored that camera. It was sharp, it was compact, and it looked beautiful. Unfortunately, it broke and I had to get rid of it. But here we are again with 40 millimeters. I just keep ending up with 40 mil lenses. I'm really a 35 guy, but there's really not a whole lot of a difference. People don't really bring up Konica much as their lens line isn't as wide as, uh, let's say, Canon or, or Nikon or Minolta. But the lenses that they did make are pretty unique. They have this pancake, of course, this is pretty common. It's a pretty cheap lens as well. Konica also came out with a 15 millimeter 2.8 fisheye that comes with multiple filters. That's definitely on the dream list for lenses that I'd like to have one day. And then their 57 millimeter 1.2. I'm a big 57 millimeter fan. My favorite lens ever since I started shooting photos was Minolta 5814, just because of its sharpness um, and how the bokeh was rendered. And the Konica from the sample images that I've seen seems to be very similar. Um, so that's something I definitely like to pick up along with its radioactivity is uh, kind of a neat quirk. Just remember to wash your hands after after handling the lens. In my experience in photography, this, does, this has given me some of my favorite images. Uh, and it's always the one I pick up and go out with, and that's the camera that is the best, is the one that's on you. Just as a summary, it's cheap, it's sharp, it works well, it's very, it's all mechanical. Thank you for watching my quick summary of the Konica Auto Reflex TC, and stick around for more. I guess you wonder where I've been, where I've been. Where are you? I said,